Welcome to Bible Theory Podcast, hosted by the Chicano Knox. Finally, a podcast about the church for the church. Bible Theory is for the streets, homie. This ain't your boy scout, choir boy type of podcast. This is for the Vato Locos who have been saved by the blood of Christ, homie. Coming straight out of Geneva. Donde están mis soldados reformados? Bienvenido a la Teoría de la Biblia podcast con el Chicano Knox. You are now entering into the reform state of mind, homie. Where we study ecclesiology and take it to the streets, homie. Coming from that five solas. Coming from that reformed underground railroad, homie. Coming from that West West 1646, yes sir. What's up? What it do? What it do, my YouTube people? Uh, all my ecclesiologists, my my theo bros, my theologians, my residential theologians, my people in the church, the elect chosen ones. This is your host, the Chicano Knox, coming live and direct from the scriptorium, from the AKA, which is the Reform Underground Studios. And, you know, today I'm coming live, so... On the weekend, yeah, that's how you know we stay grinding. The kingdom of God does not stop advancing. It keeps going and going. And, uh, you know, I want to give a shout out to everybody on Instagram. Uh, go ahead and follow me on Instagram at the Chicano Knox. Uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's live. It's up. I appreciate all your support, all the positive comments. Uh, I appreciate all the support there. Uh, go ahead and support the show. I'm going to drop the link down below. Buy me a coffee, uh, forward slash uh, the Chicano Knox. Uh, it's just a cup of coffee, man, and that's how it goes a long way to support the show. Um, today I'm coming live and direct on the weekend, so happy Fourth of July, Independence Day. Blow up those huetes, you know those fireworks. Eat some grub, barbecue, carne asada. So I appreciate you joining me uh, this morning uh, from the Middle Earth. <laughs> of the United States. And uh, thank you so much for, you know, let me know where you're, where you're watching it, this from, you know, what country, what city, uh, go ahead and let me know below um, where you're listening, is, where you're, where you're checking this out. You know what I mean? Uh, I would love to hear from you. All right. And don't forget to hit me up on my email, uh, Bible theory at the Chicano Knox.com. I, I receive a lot of emails. I appreciate all your support. Uh, any suggestions, um, any hookups, connections, a anybody that you think that I should interview about the church, uh, you know, about the doctrine of, th of the church. I appreciate that. Hit me up. Uh, Bible theory at the Chicano Knox dot com. All right. Let's go ahead and get into it, because, you know, this show, it it's about ecclesiology. Ecclesiology is just uh, the doctrine of the church. And the doctrine of the church is one of my favorite things to study, one of my favorite things to meditate on, uh, my, uh, you know, my go-to. It's my go-to. And that's what Bible theory is all about. It's about the doctrine of the church. And today, I'm going to go ahead and do something special, special, just for you. I'm going to go ahead and review a book. Yeah, a book review. That's what's up. Um, and that book is a systematic theology book. It's a, it's a big boy. Let me show the Instagram people real quick. It's a big boy right there. <laughs> it's a big boy right there. Systematic. It's uh it's called Reform Systematic Theology, a volume 1, and it's produced by Crossway and it's by Joe Beaky and Paul Smalley. And real quick, let me show this real quick. And it's volume one on, on theology is volume one of Revelation and, and God, the doctrine of God and the theology about Revelation, um, about the scriptures of Revelation. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to review this book. It's part one of the series of four. Okay. 
I, I don't own all four, by the way. This is the only one I own, and I'll tell you why. And before I do that, let me go ahead and see if I could play. Um, um, for my Instagram people, you're not going to be able to see this because I have not connected this to my Instagram yet. So hopefully next time I go live, you will see that this will um, be connected to my Instagram. So forgive me for one second. Let me go ahead and uh, share my link, my screen here, not my link. Um, see if I could do this. Woo woo. No, I can't do it. I'm not as savvy as y'all. I thought I was going to do that. Oh, wait, wait. I, I guess I can. It's from reform.com. All right. And these people are awesome. It's a great, it's a great resource to check out. It's a great resource to check out. But... They talk about, it's an interview basically with uh, Joe Beakey himself, and they talk about the book. So let me go ahead and big screen this real quick and play it. Check it out. Yes, this is my life's dream since I was a teenager, and I gave up the dream for a while, but now I, I have a, a, a TA who's taking, a teacher's assistant, who's taking my notes of systematic theology teaching. I've been teaching that for a quarter of a century or longer. And he's fleshing them out, putting footnotes, adding some things. And so I'm giving him a full co-authorship. And then I go over every chapter that he does. He gives it to me, I go over it, we talk again. We pray about it almost every day. And um, every day he's at work, we're, we're praying about it. And then um, volume one just came out from Crossway. And that deals with, um, the prolegomena, the doctrine of the word and revelation. Mm -hmm. And then the second half deals with the doctrine of God. Volume two is at the printer, being edited right now. And that deals with the doctrine of man, the doctrine of Christ. And we're working on volume three on the doctrine of salvation. And then volume four will be on the church and the last things. So it'll be a few years if God spares us both before it's completely done. But this will be my, my life's legacy. Yeah, yeah. My kind of magnum opus that I leave behind. And uh, what we do in this set of books is four things. It follows, it addresses contemporary issues, but it follows the old, old pattern of doing systematics where ethics is attached to it yeah. rather than divorced from it. And so we look at four things basically in each doctrine. We look at what does the Bible say about this truth? What does church history say? How do you experience this? How can you commune with God in relationship to this doctrine? And then fourthly, what are the major practical takeaways for your Christian life of this doctrine? And the goal is that by the end of each chapter, you'll be moved with excitement and your affections and your mind and your conscience will all be moved so that you'll break out into doxological praise or examination or comfort. So we're arguing doctrine is anything but dry yeah, or dead. Yeah. It's exciting. Uh, Luther said doctrine is heaven. Mm. So that's what we're trying to manifest so this book too, it's written at a beginning seminary level, but, but, it, but it, a lay person who's interested in Bible truth could, can make their way through this and actually find it easier reading than they might think. Yeah, and it sounds like it's very applicable. It's not just dealing with uh, arguments about logic or, or theology, but you're applying it to people's yes. lives. And, yes, yes. So very practical for, for a lay person. And there you go, from the man himself, Dr. Joe Beakey, talking about uh, his book, uh, you know, his series that he produced, co-authored with uh, Paul Smiley, and it's the Systematic Theology book. That's basically what it is. This ain't no novel. This ain't no, like, uh, sci-fi book. And, and you know what? And to be honest, it's not a, it's not a small book either. Look, look how big. Look how thick that is, you know, and it's a very intimidating for two reasons, because one, it has the word systematic theology on it, and there's baggage with that. There's like, you know, stereotypical stereotypes with that. And then two, it's, it's daunting because it's so thick, man. It's so thick. You could like defend your house 
against a burglar with with this buck. Like he could just throw it in this this buck and boom. You know what I mean? Stop a crime, stop a bank robbery in progress with this buck. That's how that's how thick it is, and it's kind of heavy. Um, real quick, just by if I, you know, I would like to begin my review just by the production of it, just by the feel. It's heavy. Um, it's thick. Um, it's you know the paper, the the font, you know the font size. Um, it's pretty average. It, it, it's it, I think it could be a little larger. So if you have um, bad eyesight or poor eyesight where you need glasses or assistance to read books, this book you may need some glasses or a magnifying glass. It's not that tiny, but at the same time, it's not a, a it's large font. I wish it would have been a little larger font print. One of my second things that um that that I'm immediately reviewing this book on it, it, you know from the outset if I just had to look at it real quick if I never read it is uh it, it comes with a jacket you see that it comes with a jacket on the cover it's not it, it's a hardback but the hardback comes with like a paper cover and more and more as I read books more and more as I uh, uh you know grow in my knowledge of Christ. I'm becoming more dis dissatisfied with books that have jackets. Now, am I going to sh- rip this off and throw it away? Probably not. But it's very it's, it, it's it's annoying when you're trying to flip to this book and you have a jacket in the way. There's multi-purpose because it's kind of you know it kind of works like a kind of like a bookmarker. I guess you could use it like a bookmarker, but it, it's a little bit annoying when you're trying to flip through the pages and you have to remind yourself like, Oh man, I got this jacket to worry about. Um, it's produced by Crossway. It's produced by Crossway. Um, I'm not sure why, um, Joe Beakey did not publish it with his own publisher, um, Reformation Heritage, maybe because they wanted to be a little bit more academic, um, a little bit more, uh, you know, with playing with the big boys kind of thing. They they wanted to uh, let someone else handle it. I don't know the history or the background there. I'm just assuming that that's probably why they didn't do it themselves because Joe Beakey has an awesome in-house publishing um, Reformation Heritage books, by the way. If you don't know them, you should. They have a lot of good books. I don't know why they didn't do it themselves, though. So. It's produced by Crossway. Now, now in my experience of reading this book, it's it's been a, it's been a blessing. It's been a true blessing. It's been an amazing experience. I encourage every Christian um, who is listening um, to get this book, to get this book, to read it, to use it. That's my quick um, synopsis of it. If I never read it. Obviously, I'm reading it. I'm not done reading it, by the way. I'm not a fast reader. I don't, I'm, I don't speed read. I don't speed read. I don't speed read, all right? Uh, for those who speed read, comment below. Let me know if you're a speed reader. Let me know what kind of reader you are. There's different types of readers, you know. There's speed readers. There's slow readers. There's readers who read, like, different books at the same time. There's different things for, you know, people do different things. Uh, real quick, I do want to just uh, quote a couple of scripture, I mean, uh, not scripture verses, uh, authors, other, other theologians, other pastors about this topic of uh, theology. Because most people would like to say, you know what, I don't read no theology. I don't get into that. And all I read is my Bible, and that's all I need. So, And there's a modern creed that says, uh, you know, the Bible is all I need. There's, you know, there's no other theology thing I need. So with that being said, I would like to rebuttal that kind of sentiment and say um, this quote from Jonathan Lehman. He's from um, Nine Marks Ministries. And I had Jonathan um, on my show, you know, in the second season. So, so shouts out to Jonathan Lehman. I appreciate you. I see you. God bless you. Hopefully you come on to uh, Bible theory again in the future. So he says, um, you know, he says, and I quote, it is essential, moreover, to get the doctrine of God right before moving on, 
either God will be the center of one's doctrinal solar system or something else will. What we believe about God determines what we believe about everything, end quote. And that's so true when studying God, studying the Lord, studying Jesus, um, and metaphysics in general, and religion in general. Because if you get the doctrine of God right, you're going to get everything else right. It's hard to get religion right if you have the doctrine of God wrong. And this is happening across the board in society. How many people you've heard that has the wrong view of God, right? That's why it's so essential to study theology. So essential to get the doctrine of God right. And that's why it starts off with volume one with with revelation and the doctrine of God. It's very basic, very elementary, very fundamental, very crucial. So Jonathan Jonathan Lehman said that. That was very important. Let me go back to another quote. Uh, John Gershner, a theologian, he said, um, and this is quoted uh in uh, reference and theology for every man, he said, and I quote, we may have a knowledge of God and not be saved, but he can never be saved without the knowledge of God, end quote. And that's so true, because how can you be saved if you don't even know God? How can you be redeemed if you don't know God? And then on the one extreme there's people that says that, you know, there's people on one extreme of the spectrum. There's people who have knowledge of God, and they remember the Bible. They remember every book. They, they, they read every single theology book. They have a Ph.D., and, and they have a doctrines in ministry. They have a bachelor's in ministry. They have, a, they have all kinds of letters after their name, and, 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 and that's not a pun. That's, there's nothing wrong with getting a PhD in doctrine or getting a master's in divinity, graduating from West West or, or, or Wheaton, you know, Gordon or whatever seminary, right? There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing evil. It's not a sin to advance your, 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 your knowledge. What is a sin and a tragedy is that if you have all knowledge, all in your head, and yet you do not know God, there's a sweet little book called uh, by J. F. Packer, and he writes a book called Knowing God. And this, he actually talks about that, that there is a difference between um, knowledge of God and the knowledge about God. You can know something about somebody, but there's a difference between knowing them and having a relationship with them. And therefore, you know them. You have a real knowledge about them because you're you're in fellowship with them. You're in communion with them. So that's what I think Josh, I mean, John, uh, John Gershner is talking about there. Uh, let me see. There's another quote I found. For those who are saying uh, that theology is not needed in the Christian life, let me say this to you. A quote here. It says, a man may be theologically knowing and spiritually ignorant. Have you ever met somebody like that? All they talk about is like God and like it's very basic and they're looking at the news. They're looking at Russia. They're looking at Ukraine. They're, they're looking at the newspapers, social media, and that's their theology. Their theology is social media. Their theology is uh, newspaper theology, right? Whatever's going on, that's their theology and they're related to the Bible somehow, right? That's a great example of how they're spiritually ignorant. They don't really know God. They don't really know about God. They don't really know the Bible. Or flip it, flip it reverse. A man could be theologically knowing, you know, having the PhDs, the MDs, the MDivs, and then yet be spiritually ignorant. I thought that was a good quote. No man that has the vitals of theology is capable of going beyond a fool in philosophy. Let me read that again. Man, that, that, that's a banger right there. 
No man that has not the vitals of theology is capable of going beyond a fool in philosophy. Philosophy, if that's all you got, and if you don't have theology, then you're a fool. Richard Baxter, that's basically what it is. Theology, man. Study theology. Uh, you know, someone who kind of res um, echoed this uh, is Archibald Alexander. He said, all my theology is reduced to this narrow compass. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, end quote. So that's a smart man right there. That's a smart man. That guy knows theology. That guy knows a lot more than I do, probably more, more than you do. And yet he is saying, after, knowing, after studying all these things, reading the Greek, knowing the Hebrew, reading the commentaries, you know, reading every systematic, I come to the conclusion that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. That's all I know. And, and that's a great, great conclusion, is that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. But that's so deep. That's the point of theology is that it provokes your mind. It challenges you. It takes you down into a path, an intellectual path, a reasoning path that, that forces you to use reason and logic uh, in, t in your intellect. It challenges your doubts. It forces you to, to take out your shovel and dig in the scriptures more and more and more. It forces you to take out all those things about the presuppositions about the world, about who you are. It challenges you to read the word correctly, to study God honestly and, and openly according to his word. And it's so true, you, you know, you need theology to save you. Oh, man. Man, there, there's this one quote, and I cannot... I cannot find it for the best of me. Yeah. Oh, Burke Parson, um, Parsons. Um, he says, Theology is not a philosophical pursuit of abstract speculations about God. It is, in fact, the examination of that which God has revealed to us. As faithful students of the Word of God, we are, by necessity, students of theology. There are, there, the two are not at odds with each other. Rather, they serve to complement one another. Whereas the Word of God is the foundation of our knowledge, theology is the expression of our knowledge. Thus, the study of God cannot be separated from the Word of God. Boom, boom. Burke, you were right on, Pastor Burke. Yes, the two are not separate. The two are not separate. Theology and the Bible are not at odds. They are homies. They are best friends. They're BFFs. They're married. They're inseparable. If you're going to read the Bible, you're going to encounter theology. Plain and simple. The word theology just means the study of God. Question yourself. Do you study God? You might say, well, duh, I read the Bible. Then newsflash, you're reading theology. I just thought I should read some of the quotes of more wiser men in the faith than I to help encourage you in your walk, in your journey with theology. Okay, let me get back to the review of the book. It's a four-part series. I got the first series. And the reason why I only got the first series because, one, um, I, I want to read this book. I, sin I sincerely want to read it um, pretty much every page. And... The way you read a systematic theology book, in my experience, in my opinion, is that you do not read a systematic theology book like an ordinary book on your bookshelf. That's my opinion. That's my experience. 
That's my conclusion. You may disagree with that. That's totally fine. I think you can read the theology, a theology book from cover to cover, page by page, like the way you read uh, uh, Lord of the Rings. I think you can. Now, for me, I have done that, and I've come away with two things. One is dry, and two, it's hard. It's dry, and then it's hard. I'll, I'll leave that there. I use theology books as references, mostly to study on topics, like for topical study, for reference, for backup, for ammo. What does the Bible say about this? Hmm, let me go to the Bible. And then... I'm going to go to the theology books, see what other men in the faith who are wiser than me have said on this one topic. For example, ecclesiology, like the doctrine of the church or the doctrine of God. And that's what I use my systematics theology for. And I have several of them. I have Louis Burkhoff. I have um, Herman Bavinick. I have Calvin's. Um, I have Wayne Grudem's. I have several systematic theology books. In all of them, I have read, um, like the way I told you, I read this one. And I, I am reading this one in, in the sense of topical studies, reference studies, ammo. I don't read my systematic theology books as cover to cover like the way I read Lord of the Rings. I don't. One, it's not enjoyable for me. And two, it's really hard and it becomes dry. Go ahead and try it. You're gonna, it's, it's going to get dry and it's going to exhaust your mind because there's a lot of things being said in those systematics that it, sometimes it goes over your head. That's my number one takeaway um, of the reason why I only bought one part one of the series. It's because I wanted – I want. I, like I don't want I don't want it as a prompt, you know what I mean? Like I could I could have bought all three of them and have it in the back of my bookshelf, and then it would be really hard to get to them, you know? It'd be really hard. Now I'm tempted to do that, and there's no problem in doing that because I have done that, buy books and then let them sit. And one of my ways I fight against that is by buying one and forcing myself to finish it as much as I can. Um, and then moving on to the next. Um, so I have used this book um, to my advantage in the sense where I have um, used it for reference, cross-reference, for ammo, for backup, uh, for topical studies, for, for you know, just go to, go to. It's so easy. It's so easy to, uh, uh, you know, to to get lost in books, right? It's so easy to get lost in books. And it's so easy to forget about books. How many books do you have on your shelf that you just forgot about that you never get to? I could probably think about 10 to 12 books on my shelf. Um, so my review, um, I opened this up and I read the first quote. He says, the church needs good theology that engages the head the heart and the hands. Now, I, I would love to add the feet because you want to take it everywhere you go. But yes, this is a four-volume work, combines rigorous historical theological scholarship with application and practicality, um, characterized by an, by an accessible reform and experiential approach. Man, that right there puts it all in a nutshell, does it? It does. It, it, you know, one of the things that I have learned about reading this and using this, and I've used this in my tacos and theology study with some of the guys, um, you know, monthly. It, I use this. I used it a lot, actually. And this is actually right now in my list of systematic theology books, if I had to rank them. This one is my number one favorite right now. This is my favorite one right now. My number one, my go-to number one. And I'll go ahead and get into that. Because my favorite thing about it is that it's so easy to read, guys. It is so easy to read. Yeah, there's concepts that he gets into that goes over your head. Because it, it, your mind, 
may not be ready for it. Maybe your, 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 your spiritual journey, it's not ready to take you there yet. So go back to that. That's fine. So yeah, I have encountered those things that got, you know, some of the concepts that kind of goes over my head. And that's because you're dealing with this volume one is about God. It's about the doctrine of God. And, but it, it is so easy to read. So easy to read. I have been impressed by it. And although it may look daunting because of the size and the word systematic, don't let it don't let the cover and the name fool you. Because when you open it up and get into it, you'll be shocked of how easy it is to actually finish a chapter, how easy it is to read a whole section in one sitting, how easy it is to go through whole section how easy it is because it's easy it's really simple if you're a lay person in the faith you don't have any doctrine degrees you don't have any phds if you're simply just watching this and saying man what theology book should i get myself started in this one joe beaky paul smiley thank you so much for producing this book thank you we with the church owes you um a huge thanks. A hundred years from now, if the Lord should tarry, this should be in every seminary. This should be in every high school, every every high school, every college, every person in academia should have this copy. Thank you, Crossway, for producing this. Let me just give you a snippet, a sample. Page 195, General Revelation, part, part one, biblical teaching. He says, more than I have, well, let me just skip that part because he quotes somebody. Let me just get to Joe Beakey himself and Paul Smiley. Revelation around man and creation. And then he starts, point, point one, general revelation of the divine nature. Now I'm just reading this to give you an example Referring to humanity in general, Paul writes in Romans 1, 1 chapter 1, 19 to 20, then he quotes that, and he says, um, then he goes on, uh, in this text, the apostle teaches the following truths about God's revelation. Number one, it reveals God to a limited degree, and then he goes on, and then part two, it reveals God in an open and plain manner. And number three, it reveals God according to his will. And he goes on. You see that? It's so simple. That's one of my favorite things about this book, that it's so simple to read. I'll give you my number two favorite thing about this book. My number two. Oh, my word. Joe, you have a heart of a pastor. You have a heart of discipleship. You actually include hymns, doxology, worship. Now, for me, I cannot sing a lick, right? I cannot sing a note if my life depended on it. God bless you if you can sing. But that's not the point. The point is we're, um, studying God, studying theology, what is the goal? What is the goal? The goal of studying theology is to bring you back to the posture of worship, bring you back to worshiping God, meditating, meditating on God, not just meditating on God in your mind, but like worshiping God in awe. Because you just learn tons about God, revelation, right, about who he is, the mysteries revealed in scripture being explained to you for the first time, things that the angels don't even know about, that you, we, me and you have privilege, privilege to get into. And he does it. He, pr he provides the lyrics. Sing to the Lord, trusting in God's revelation. How firm a foundation, how firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he had said, you who unto Jesus for refuge have fled. And he gives you the quotation, the Trinity hymnal uh, number 80. Wow. 
So it's like you're kind of like at church when you're done reading it. It was actually a surprise, like a little bit like a, I felt like a little, what is this doing here? I don't know if you felt that, but no other theology book that I have, that I own, that I read, at least the main line, have worship. It doesn't. John Calvin doesn't have any worship. He, I know he quotes it and quotes Psalms. He quotes a couple of things, but he doesn't have like a whole section dedicated where he's done talking, done writing. And he tells you, okay, now is the part where you sing. Here's the lyrics. He doesn't do that. Herman Bavanik, he doesn't do that. He just talks about theology you know, in this bullet point style, logically connecting the dots for you. And then that's it. On to the next bullet point. Wayne Grudem, same thing. Very easy, practical, simple. It's like the Wayne Grudem, although he has issues, and I refer to James White on that. Anyways, I've learned a lot about Wayne Grudem. It's one of my first systematic theology books I ever read in my life. And it's so easy. It's I, I think Wayne Grudem is the NIV of systematic theologies because it's so easy to read. It's like in modern language. It's like in written not too long ago. I have the audio form and I have the book. So it, it's so easy to read. If you have not Wayne, read Wayne Grudem, I think everybody should. But this is way easier. I think this is better than Wayne Grudem's. Way better than Wayne Grudem's. It's so easy to read, and it provides worship. What other system? I know there might be another systematic theology book out there. Don't get me wrong. I haven't read them all. I know Jonathan Edwards wrote a bunch. John Owen wrote a bunch. Josh Gerdner. John, um, John Gershner wrote a bunch. R.C. Sproul probably wrote. John Piper probably wrote. I'm not saying I agree with all these people, but I'm just saying they all wrote like something, you know? But from, so far from what, I, from what I read, he has a whole section dedicated to doxology, encouraging you to sing. That is amazing. I just got to emphasize that, and I can't do it enough. The third thing I like, questions for meditation and discussion. Now, if you read Burkhoff's um, summaries of his, of his systematic theology, which I read, it's so easy. He does have discussions. And most theology books have discussions nowadays, you know, a little section where it encourages you to, to, to meditate, to do cross-examination, to, to do self-examination. Those type of elements are very common in systematic theology books. But this has it, this has it made. This has it made. If you're, if you're a, a pastor looking for questions, if you're a, a group leader leading a study in theology on, on the doctrine of God, on general revelation, and you're looking for questions, use this. Use this book. It's made for group settings, it, it feels like. I'm not sure if it is, but it, may, it feels like it. Um, it's made for comfort. If you're struggling with the question, you can't answer it, and this book has those type of answers and it asks the right questions. That's my other thing I, I liked about it. Then it has a, like it, it stretches you more. It stretches you further. It asks you another thing that I like, an element for deeper reflection. It's only like two or three questions. It's not that much, um, but it, it, it takes you deeper for, for like, like what Joe Beakey said in, in the interview I played, he said, it's not just for, um, how do you say it? Man, I wish I could play it again. Um, it's not just questions that you just ask yourself in a group setting or ask yourself after you're done reading, kind of like a and a kind of like a pop quiz. Like, yeah, that's kind of in there. But it, it, it's more like a deeper reflection as, okay, how can I use this every day? How can I use this every day? What can I take home with, to, with me with, about this, what I just read, about general revelation, for example? What can I take home? How can I use this in my daily life? Oh, my word. I just read this. 
how many times you read a systematic theology book and you come away with, how do I even apply this in my life? What is the application? What are, what are the implications of these things that I just read? I know I read tons of systematics and I walked away not knowing what to do with that. It's very experiential. And that's what Reformed theology does. That's what the great thing about Reformed theology is, is that it's not just head knowledge. It's not just theology, knowledge of God that engages the head. It's, it's the knowledge of God that engages the head, the heart, the hands, and feet. You take it with you. Those, those are my favorite things about this book. Oh, man. It does have an index and has all the references. Has introduction. Let me just read the preface, preface on it. It says, This systematic theology explores the classical teachings of the Reformed Christian faith from a perspective that is biblical, doctrinal, experiential, and practical. Today's churches need theology that engages the head the heart and the hands. Too often, we, are, we have compartmentalized these aspects of life as if we would cut, cut ourselves into pieces. The result has been academics for, for the sake of academics. Spiritual experience without roots deep in God's word. And superficial, and superficial um, pragmatism that chases after the will, the will or the grasp of short-term results. The church has suffered from this fragmented approach to the Christian faith. However, we we have learned from the reform, from the reformers, the British Puritans, the Dutch further Reformation divines. An approach to Christianity that combines thoughtful exegesis of the Holy Scriptures, rich exploration of classic Augustinian and Reformed theology, an experiential tone that brings truth into the heart and practical applications for life. Wow. Mm -hmm. I could read this all along. The history element is awesome. He quotes people you probably never heard of. He quotes them saying like Justin Martyr. He quotes the apostles. He quotes, um, you know, people that you probably haven't read before. Um, The church fathers, the reformers, other theologians. I read a quote on here by John Frame, some modern people, R.C. Sproul, Alistair Begg, I think is quoted in here. So he, he quotes both old historical in modern people, in the faith. So that's nice. That's good. And it's relevant because you might recognize John Frame or D.A. Carson or Alistair Begg, maybe. Um, so, or R.C. Sproul. So it's not just 100%, you know, focused on the historical people of the faith, like Augustine, Justin Martyr, uh, Tertullian, uh, you know, he, he's not just, you know, drawing from them to connect the dots for you, but he's drawing them in a way where you're like, oh, man, that quote came in timely. That quote came in perfectly. It matches perfectly with this topic that he's talking about. For example, general revelation. So that's the historical part. You see the continuity between the modern faith that you have in Jesus with the ancient faith that the church at the early church had or the middle age, the middle, middle medieval time of the midi, the medieval times, right. Um, that they had. So that's also unique. It, it connects, it connects the past with, with the present really well. Um, and it's not just rooted. Like he said, it's not just rooted and the reformers, it's it's rooted in, you know, people that came before the reformers, like Augustine, you know, Tertullian, obviously, biblical 
It's all biblical, 100%. What does the Bible say about general revelation, for example? What does the Bible say? Let's go to it. So he makes biblical arguments from the Bible consistently. Then he goes on to history and says, what did, what did church history has to say about this? And then he goes on to say, how can we apply it? What's the practical implications of this in your life? So, yes. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Joe Beakey, Paul Smiley, Crossway, for this book, for this amazing, amazing systematic. I encourage you to read it. I encourage you to own it. I encourage you to buy a Christmas gift. You know, this is a great Christmas gift, by the way, or a birthday gift or an anniversary gift or a graduation gift or whatever. That's my synopsis of that book. That's my synopsis. Man, it's so amazing. And, and, you know, the length of it is not that long, too. He has, you know, every section is appropriately length. It's not, you know, and then he gets into the common objections of why we do theology, why study it. Um, he, he get it's so relevant for our day and age. It's so relevant for our day and age. I encourage you to own it. If you're a church leader, you should own this. If you're uh, leading a group, you know, you should own this. All right. Well, I think I'll bring this video to an end. Thank you so much for checking this out for my book review on the systematic, Reformed Systematic Theology, Volume 1 on Revelation and the Doctrine of God by Joe Beakey and Paul Smiley. is available on Crossway or, or um, Reformation Heritage Books. I think I dropped the link right there. Go ahead and click on it. Buy it. It's not that expensive, by the way. Um, it's like 30 bucks. It's not that bad. Uh, you know, so I appreciate all your support. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel if you found this helpful, if you found this edifying. Uh, please tell your friends and families about this book, about my channel as well. Look for me on Instagram, Facebook, and Getter. Hashtag Bible Theory on your social media pages for support. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter um, at the Chicano Knox. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for um, tuning in on this 4th of July weekend. Uh, hopefully you have a safe one. Hopefully you and your family would not only recognize the blessings that God has given us in this country, but the blessings that he has given you ultimately, the ultimate freedom and independence from being self-dependent and being dependent on God. So uh, meditate not just on the independence and privileges of this country, but, but meditate on, on, the in, on, on the dependence that we have on God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. With that, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, don't forget to follow me and uh, stay tuned for the next episode. God bless you. Amen.